and M filters with the miracle tip. King size, regular, both at the same low price. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Look in the window over there. In the restaurant, Mr. Dillon. What? Doc's got himself a girl. But, well, I'll be... <laughs> I never saw her before, Chester. He's waving at us. He wants us to come in. Oh, all right. Now, look, you come in and say hello and then go on out of the telegraph office. Huh? Might be important. Okay, sir. Now, that girl must be a real good friend, Mr. Dillon, if Doc's buying her dinner. Yeah, if he is. He better be. Hey, she ain't half ugly. Shh. I, uh, wouldn't put it exactly that way to her. Oh, well, hello Chester. there, Matt. <laughs> Chester. Hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. Ah, uh, well, Abby. Abby, this is Marshal Dillon. And Chester Proudfoot. Abby Twilling. How do you do, gentlemen? Miss Twilling. How do you do? <laughs> sit down, sit down. Well, thank you, Doc. Well, I- I'll be back directly, Doc. I gotta go across to the depot. There's a telegraph waiting for Mr. Dillon. I'll be here, Chester. Okay, sir. I'll hurry. Doc's been uh, telling me about you, Marshal. Oh? Oh, no, don't look at me like that now, man. <laughs> and she wants to know all about Dodge. And I've been trying to tell her uh, what to expect. <laughs> well, in Dodge, you can expect almost anything, Miss Twilling. So I hear. But Abby's seen her share of violence, Matt. She was a nurse in the war. Oh? Well, that's how I met Doc. We worked in the same hospital for nearly a year. Oh, oh best dog got nurse I ever saw. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to talk her into settling down here. Old Dodge could use somebody like her. Are you moving on, Miss Twilling? Why, I... I haven't any plans, Marshal. I've been working in St. Louis, but it's lonely, and I got restless and decided to ride the Santa Fe as far west as it goes. <laughs> I'm on sort of a vacation, you might say. Somebody on the train mentioned my name, and she looked me up right off. Well, it's been a long time, Doc. Oh, yeah, too long. Oh, you stay here, Abby. We'll keep you busy. (laughs) Oh, yes, and who knows? Maybe we'll even find you a husband. (laughs) Uh, Oh, oh, my, I'm sorry. That's all right, Doc. You see, my husband was killed in the war, Marshal, the first year. That's why I went into nursing. Oh, I see. Well, I... I think I'd better get back to the hotel. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, well, I'll take you, Abby. Yes. <laughs> You're going to wait here for Chester, Matt? Oh, he's coming now. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you, Miss Twilling. Thank you, Marshal. Good night. Good night. I'll see you later, Doc. Sure, Matt. <laughs> this way, Abby. Uh, well, Chester. Uh, Miss Twilling, Doc. Well, I, I got it, Mr. Dillon. Hang on. Oh, thanks, Chester. Sit down while I read it. Who's it from? Uh, It's from Wyatt Earp, out in Arizona. It is? Is he coming here? No. No, it says, uh, Coney Thorne, released from state prison last week. I hear he's looking for you, so you better go on wearing that gun a while longer. Good luck, W. Earp. Who's Coney Thorne, Mr. Dillon? What's he want of you? I expect he wants to kill me, Chester. What? What for? Well, I arrested him out in Arizona. 
A long time ago, he was one of the suspects in the stage holdup. So I had to bring him in, even though I thought he had nothing to do with it. Well, then why'd he go to prison? Well, I wasn't on the jury, Chester. And anyway, I left that part of the country before he was tried. I heard later that he was sent to prison. Well, you didn't have nothing to do with it. No, I arrested him. And according to this telegram, he thinks I had a lot to do with it. Then he's really coming here, huh? Corny Thorne wasn't a bad man, Chester. But prison may have changed him some. Yeah, he'll probably be here next week sometime. filters are sweeping the country. L and M, the filter tip cigarette everyone's talking about. Everyone's changing to. Here's what John Robert Powers told us. I never realized a filter cigarette could taste this good and at the same time filter so much more effectively. I'm convinced this is it. And Patricia Morrison says, I changed to L and M filters and I'm so glad I did because here's a filter cigarette that really tastes the way a cigarette should. David Wayne wrote, L&M's have the best filter of them all. Miracle Tip is right. There's nothing like it. Yes, L&M filters are truly sweeping the country, breaking more sales records every day. The reason? It's the filter that counts, and no filter compares with L&M's Miracle Tip. Notice how easy it draws. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine. Yes. This is it. L&M filters. This is it. Something new. Now, two sizes. L&M filters. New king size and regular, too. This is it. L&M filters. L&M filters with the miracle tip. So join the trend to L&M. King size, regular. Both at the same low price. lot of things I didn't like about being a lawman, and having to face a man who was out purely for revenge was one of them. It didn't matter what his reasons were. When Coney Thorne arrived, I had to shoot it out with him. A man who'd travel all the way to Dodge City from Arizona wasn't going to be put off by argument. However, a week passed, and he didn't show up, and I began to hope that maybe he'd changed his mind. Until one day when I was sitting with Kitty watching the crowd from the porch of the Dodge house. Well, must be supper time. Here comes the noon stage. <laughs> the way he's driving those horses, he shouldn't be late. <laughs> he's never been on time yet unless there was an Indian scare going on. Not many passengers. Three. No, another one getting out. Yeah. All strangers. No, not all of them, Kitty. Not to me. What? That last man I got out. I've been waiting for him. Coney Thorn. Well, I might as well get this over with right now. Uh, look, Kitty, you uh, better go inside, huh? Yeah, I sure will. Good luck, man. Yeah. took you so long. I was expecting you last week. How'd you know I was coming? Uh, you must have told somebody. You got friends everywhere, ain't you, Marshal? I never thought you had anything to do with that holdup, Tony. I told you at the time I was sorry I had to take you in. I've been five years in prison, Marshal, no matter what you thought. I'm not apologizing. But you're free now, Tony. Why do you want to die? What makes you think I'm going to die? Well, a man in prison doesn't get much chance to handle a gun. You must be pretty rusty by now. A lot of ways to kill a man, Marshal. In the back? Think about it. Now, you've changed, Connie. 
You were a man once. Five years in prison, Marshal, wasn't any good. Nearly went crazy. I would have till I got to thinking about who put me there. That saved my mind, kind of. Yeah, but you're out now. It's all over. No, not yet. I ain't gonna fight you, Marshal. Not till I'm ready. Not till I figure out how to kill you. I'm gonna make you go crazy waiting the way I had done. And I'll sleep all the better knowing you're gonna have to have one eye open every minute from now on. You're not the first man who's wanted to kill me. Maybe not. But I'm gonna be the first to do it. <laughs> How come you're up so early? Well, I got a call last night, Matt, about 3 o'clock. A fellow of the Dodge house was keeping everybody awake. Huh? <laughs> well, it sounds more like they should have called me. No, no, he wasn't drunk, Matt. He was delirious. It was brain fever, most people call it. Oh? Uh-huh. Well, I couldn't leave him there alone, so I got Abby Twilling to take a room next to his. Uh, the first chance you got, you put her to work, huh? Well, a man that sick has to have care, Matt. Well, you talk like he's going to die. <laughs> Not with Abby working on him. No, <laughs> he isn't. Well, that's fine. Yeah. The man's name is Coney Thorne, Matt. What? Yeah, he won't be up and about for another week, though. Yeah, I thought he looked sick when he got off the stage yesterday. Well, he was. Well, maybe it was the fever that made him talk like he was planning to shoot me in the back. What's that? Yeah, that wasn't like Coney. He was never that kind of a man. Good morning, Mr. Dillon. Doc? Oh, good morning, Chester. Oh, where'd you get that mail at this hour? It ain't mail, Doc. It's a telegraph here, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, you know, sometimes I wish they'd never invented the telegraph. But maybe it's Washington, Matt, offering you a raise. <laughs> if they'd send me last month's check by mail, I'd be satisfied. Well. Well, what is it, Mr. Dillon? It's from a U.S. Marshal in Phoenix. He says if Coney Thorne has left Arizona, he's broken his parole. He turns up here looking for me to arrest him. I didn't know he was on parole. No, neither did I. But they're willing to pay the expense of sending him back under escort. You going all the way to Arizona with him, Mr. Dillon? No, 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 of course not. I'll hire somebody. Well, you can't put that man in jail, Matt. Now, why not? He's too sick. And I won't have Abby nursing a man in jail. It's bad enough in the hotel. Well, as long as he can't run away. He'll be in bed for a week. And if you don't tell him about this, he won't run anyway. Okay, Doc. Uh, I'll leave him alone. For a week. I kept track of Coney's progress through Doc. And the rest of Dodge did, too. Everybody in town knew he'd come there to shoot me, and it seemed like they were all waiting for him to get well and try it. And there were a number of men who'd have been right happy if he'd done it. I waited for over a week, and he was still in bed. So finally, I went over to the hotel to have a talk with him. Oh, it's Marshal Dillon. Hello, Abby. Uh, can, can we come in? Why, of course, come in. Thank you. Hello, Chester. Hello, Miss Twilling. Now, oh, where's your patient? Oh, this is my room, Marshal. He's right through there. I have it arranged this way so he won't be disturbed. Now, is, uh, is he still sick, Abby? He's better. Well, Doc says that he could get up. Please, Marshal, give him a little more time, a couple of days. It's very important. It is? I know what he came here for. It, it doesn't matter to you if he stays in bed a while longer, does it? No. But uh, if he's well, why are you keeping him in bed? It's good for him. Coney needs a rest like this. You've no idea how much he needs it. Please, Marshal. Uh, Abby. Yes? You, uh... You, you got to know Coney pretty well, haven't you? Yes, I have. What kind of a man would you say he is? He's a good man, Marshal. But he's suffered a lot being in prison the way he was, and... Well, it's, it's like soldiers I've seen who've been through too much. They change for a while, anyway. But if they're given a chance, the right kind of a chance, they find their way back sometimes. Uh, uh, that, that's what you're doing, giving him a chance, huh? I'm trying, 
Marshal. Well, how does he feel about it? I'm not sure yet. Uh, Chester. Yes, sir? I changed my mind about talking to Connie. Come on. Okay, sir. Thank you, Marshal. I, uh, guess I'll know how you make out, Abby, one way or the other. I swear I don't understand what you was talking about, Mr. Dillon. Well, I don't understand it either, Chester, but uh, my guess is that Abby's fallen in love with him. What? <laughs> that, that don't make sense. That seldom does. That doesn't keep it from happening. No, sir. My, kind of scary, ain't it? Well, Abby's a little scared. She's not sure about Coney. But anyway, he trusts her enough to have told her about being out on parole. That's why she figured I'd heard about it and had come to arrest him. What you gonna do? Well, Abby asked for a couple of more days, Chester. I think she deserves them. I just coming in to say hello. Oh, the air's better out here, Matt. I never saw that saloon so crowded as it is tonight. Oh, a couple of new herds arrived today. Yeah, I know. I danced with every cowboy that came with them. I had to get out of there while I could still walk. <laughs> well, as long as they're dancing, they're not fighting. Oh, you ever dance with one of them, Matt? Oh, is it that bad? Oh. Mr. Dillon? Hello, oh, Miss Kitty. Evening, Chester. Mr. Dillon, right across the street there, I, I, I just seen Coney Thorne. What? Well, where was he headed? He, he was knocking on the front door of the stage office, and nobody didn't answer, so he went around back. Oh. Uh, I'll see you later, kid. Sure. Looks like Coney's trying to run off, Mr. Dillon. Well, there's no stage till tomorrow morning, Chester. Besides, he doesn't know I'm going to arrest him. Well, at least he didn't come gunning for you as soon as he got out of bed. Well, maybe he wants to be sure of a seat on the stage first. He said he went around to the back of the office. Yes, sir, right up the alley here. Yeah. Look, uh, you better stay back a little, huh? Hmm? Being in bed so long might have made Coney a little nervous. Well, yes, sir. Chester! You all right, Mr. Dillon? No, he didn't hit me. But I didn't hit him either. He had a horse waiting out there. Come on, if we hurry, we can still follow him. breaking more sales records every day. The reason? It's the filter that counts. And no filter compares with L&M's Miracle Tip for quality or effectiveness. And notice how easy it draws. You get much more flavor, much less nicotine. Effective filtration. Our statement of quality goes unchallenged. L&M is America's highest quality and best filter tip cigarette. Buy L&M King Size. Buy L&M Regular. Buy L&M's by the carton. King Size, Regular, both at the same low price. L&M, light and mild. the full moon to help us, Chester and I didn't have much trouble staying on Coney Thorne's trail once we hit it. We pulled up now and then and listened, and we could hear his horse running hard, not too far ahead of us. But he didn't run long. 
Coney had made a poor choice in the mount that he'd stolen and had sold on him within an hour. We found the horse standing riderless with his head down, his legs weak and quivering. That poor horse is plumb bedrock, Mr. Dillon. He ought to be shot. Now, never mind the horse, Chester. Let's find Coney. He can't be very far. There's no place to hide out here. Huh. There's something over there, Chester. Hmm? Off to the left there. It ain't moving. Now, yeah, well, let's take a look. Look, you ride straight from here, and I'll come in on an angle. Okay, sir. All right, right in, Chester, but be careful. Chester, but he's all through shooting. Yeah, Chester. Yes, sir. Been down here, take a look. Well, that ain't Coney Thorne. No. You ever seen this man before? No, sir. I don't know who it is. He ain't dead. No, but he's bleeding pretty bad. I'm afraid he soon will be. Who are you, fellow? Hey. What's your name? Marshal. Yeah, that's right. I'm the Marshal. Now, why did you try to shoot me back in Dodge tonight? You can't do nothing to me now. No harm in talking. I heard that fellow was going to shoot you. Like Coney Thorne? I don't know his name. I don't know nothing about him. Well, then what's he got to do with your trying to shoot me? Nothing. Only I figured I could do it, and they'd blame him. Well, why? I never saw you before. Why did you want to shoot me? Kill a marshal? That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Kill a marshal? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Didn't work. You kill me. Dead, ain't he? Yeah, he's dead. A darn fool. What good would shooting you have done him? Well, it made him feel better for some reason, Jesse. But why? I don't know. That's the idea of shooting a marshal and getting away with it, I guess. He didn't have any more sensible a reason. No, sir. Well, let's get him buried. It'll be daylight before we get back to Dodge as it is. I still got to find Coney. <laughs> Mr. Dillon is just about to leave. We got back just in time. Now, why would Coney be taking the stage? He hasn't finished his business here yet. Nobody was trying to get in the office when I seen him last night. By heaven, there he is. Yes, sir, and Abby, too. Now, what are they up to? Now, let's ask them. Let them stand, Joe. Yes, sir. Marshal? You, uh, going someplace, Coney? Well, I heard about last night, Marshal. But it wasn't me shot at you. You know it wasn't. I found the man that did it. I ain't going to kill you. That's all over, Marshal. It is. It was like being crazy, Marshal, for a long time. And I got the fever, and Abby was there talking to me all the time, taking care of me. Now, somehow, I ain't mad at nobody. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Coney. 
Being in prison so long when I was innocent, it was bad, Marshal. Yeah. Yeah. Look, Coney, uh, you shouldn't have left Arizona. You broke your parole. I'm going to have to send you back. He's going back, Marshal. Right now. With me. What? We're going to be married. And, and then he's going to turn himself in. Is that true, Coney? I'll get another year. But Abby says it's the only way. You're going to get married, huh? We'll make out, Marshal. But please, please don't arrest him here. Let him go alone with me. It isn't much. You can give him that. Chester. Yes, sir? Go over to the telegraph office and write something out and send it to the Marshal in Phoenix, huh? Well, what'll I say? Tell him thanks for the warning. And tell him if Coney Thorne did leave Arizona and came here to shoot me, I'd arrest him quick. But knowing Coney, I think he's learned his lesson. He's got more sense. Yes, sir. Now get going. <laughs> All of you. Now our star, William Conrad. Thank you. If you're a filter tip smoker, you should be smoking L&M's. Everyone agrees L&M's are just what the doctor ordered. The first filter that really does the job and a real good taste to go with it. Maybe you'll prefer L&M's king size, as I do. But either size, I know you'll like them, and I know you'll stick with them. L&M's. Try them. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, B.B. Janis, and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in gun smoke. The makers of L&M Filters also present for your television pleasure the new Stu Irwin Show. It's a happy half hour with June and Stu Irwin, which begins October 20th in most cities. Please check your local television listings for time and channel for L&M's Stu Irwin Show. Hear Gunsmoke every Saturday, this same time, this same station. Hear the great new Perry Como radio show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, also on CBS Radio. CBS Radio Network.